Hello. A while ago, when I first discovered the environment lighting in Arnold, I created this tutorial. I called it Atmospheric Area Lights because I was using an area light which is sitting here and it uh, has this wonderful foggy uh, influence on the rest of the scene. It's a volume light really, but uh, you can call it atmospheric light because it fills the whole scene. Uh, it's a global setting. You cannot say uh, this light is an atmospheric light or, or not. Uh, atmospheric uh, light settings cover the whole scene. It's a sort of an update and uh, making things uh, a little bit more easy. Uh, the basic setting, and I say this in advance, is here. You go to the render settings and then the Arnold render tabs and uh, here you have the environment and here is the atmosphere. When you click here you can create an AI atmosphere vo volume. Here you can create fog which I did uh, demonstrate in another tutorial. So that's basically what we're dealing with today. Let me show you a rendering which I just did over lunch. It's nothing spectacular but it shows the influence of a volume light. So let's get started. Let's place a plane in the scene. Let's make the grid invisible. Windows General Editors Content Browser. Let's introduce a biped like the obese man in the scene. We scale him down. Let's move him to the side. Now we create a sphere which is going to be the house for our light. Resize the ground plane, move the character to the side. And now uh, with this sphere we select several faces which we delete in order to build, uh, to give uh, the light an output, to create basically windows. So I delete those faces, go back, right mouse click to object mode now. Um, in order to keep things a bit um, consistent, I give the obese man an existing material, which is the Lambert shader. So everything is gray in the scene now. Uh, when we render it, of course, uh, it will be black because there's no light in the scene. Now we create a light and you can use the environment light, the volume light, so to say, with the spotlight, with the point light and with the Arnold area light we'll use a point light because it will sit in the center of that sphere. It's just a point which emits light. So let's create lights, point light. Uh, it sits here currently, so let's move it here and a little bit up. And I guess it's uh, very dim. Yes, it is. So we raise the exposure here. And now you can see a little bit of the um, of the influence of the light. Let's set it to 20. Now the light is shining on the scene and it's casting a shadow on our creature here. The rendering goes very fast, four seconds, but uh, with a lot of artifacts uh, and grain here, which we don't care about in this tutorial. We Need, would need to go to the uh, render settings and increase the anti-aliasing. Uh, never mind, uh, the light shines from that sphere out to the man and uh, that's basically a very nice uh, starting point already. Now when we uh, want to introduce volumetric light, that's light which sh actually casts fog-like influence on, on the rest of the world, on the rest of the scene, we need to go to, as I said before, Render Settings, Arnold Renderer, Environment and Create 
and atmosphere volume. Well, it doesn't do anything. And that's a frustrating thing for many people. Um, but uh, it's very simple, really. Uh, here are the attributes of the atmosphere volume. And the density currently is set to zero. When we raise this value, we have a lot of environment light, almost too much. We can lower the density now, but uh, we rather change the intensity of the point light. So we reduce this from 20 to say 7. So we see this influence here, let's raise it to 13. You have to try things out here. And you see very nice effects already. Arnold is rendering the thing and it's basically it, rendering time 9 seconds. So that's already a very nice view here. Uh, if you want to change the density now of uh, the light effect here, of the environment light, by the way, this window, for example, wonderful simulation of uh, real-world uh, lighting, because this is in the background, but it uh, mixes with that foreground thing and the corner here, how it, it emits light. Now, anyway, if you want to go back to the settings of that um, uh, fog effect, there are two ways to get there. Uh, one is you go back to the render settings here and click on in under environment on this arrow here. Then the outliner shows the parameters here again. So you can lower the density uh, from uh, 0 0.04 to 0 0.02 for example. You can do that here. Also a nice effect is uh, to uh, create a ramp for the light. Uh, for example, here you can give it colors. Let's give it a red color, for example, or a yellow color like this. So that's a pretty amazing and very simple way to uh, produce uh, interesting light effects. That's all done by this ramp, which is not very sophisticated, really. When you rotate the sphere, of course, the whole light influence will be different because of the windows here. Just a tiny rotation will bring our character better in focus with his shadow here. The other way to get to the settings, in, to the attribute editor, is to actually right mouse click here in the outliner to not show DAG objects only, but to show everything. And under everything you find pretty early here the atmosphere, um, AI atmosphere volume here. And then you have the settings here as well. Don't forget to switch back to show DAG objects only in order to clean up your view here in the outliner, because in most cases you don't want to see all the details here. Well, uh, the samples are important for graininess, so the more, uh, the higher the, that value, the more, the better is the resolution, the, I mean, the quality of the picture, the rendered image, and uh, it takes uh, more rendering time as well. Now, um, you can s uh, move forward to your, the rest of your day now, but for uh, people who are interested, I will delete this sphere here and create a new one. And that sphere um, should have many more subdivisions. 50 by 50 is not enough. Let's go 100 by 200. So we have a lot of detail here. We go to face selection and just pick a random face and delete it. Go back to object mode and now with the Alt key pressed we go to Prosets. Prosets is a plugin which costs 40 pounds, English pounds, programmed by Mainframe North in the UK. Uh, and it's really worth its money um, because it creates such complex uh, geometry as you'll see in a second. So I select the delete component here. There's no other choice anyway. 
and uh, I have uh, my ProSet here now, ProSet 1 it, it is called. Uh, I've set the component mode to face, which is okay because I'm dealing with faces. Now I go to Modulus and check Use Modulus and I'm gonna use this kind of modulus here. Then I go down to Random, I set the Random seat to 1 or, or, or 3 and uh, choose the number of components to be uh, affected by it, say 500. So I have a more random distribution here and now I can go up to the percentage here, it makes the, the sphere, uh, it dismantles the sphere from the top, from the bottom. Let's render this. Let's get closer to that chap. Let's put him a little bit more into focus. We can now rotate that sphere so it opens a little bit at the bottom. Render it again so much more light comes out of it. We need to go a little bit further away to see the whole shadow of the chap. And I break the connection and I make the light basically white. Now under the render, render settings I increase the camera anti-aliasing and the diffuse anti-aliasing and here I increase the samples from 5 to 14 for example and I go to view to set the test resolution to 200% which means I'm rendering a really large image now. And with that, I'd like to leave you alone. Have fun with environment light, which is a very strong light effect. Bye-bye.